Grip, grip, grip. There he goes on power. machine. Welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt and I'm here in sunny California with my wife Marty, the M4 competition convertible, and we've just completed a 10-day tour of Southern California, up even into Yosemite. We started in LA, we drove canyons, we went to Sequoia, drove switchbacks up the mountain, and we drove to Yosemite and all the way back to LA. So we are intimately familiar with this car. So today we're hitting the highlights, the best and the rest, starting with the rest. But before we do, I want to thank Jeff and BMW USA for hooking up the M4, it has been a fantastic partner this whole trip. And I do want to thank BMW Eyewear for making sure we look as good as possible all through this tour. But let's get into the review. And the first thing, and of course we have to talk about it, is the price. The M4 convertible starts at $90,000. And as tested, this has pretty much every box ticked. It comes out to about $125,000. Now, the 2023 Mercedes C63 AMG convertible, the one with the V8, that also starts at $90,000, but of course you do get the V8 and then the open top experience that would give you a little bit more drama than you get from the straight six here on this M4. But of course, you won't be able to buy the 2023 C63 with the V8 for very long and we all know what they did to the 2024. So. It's also gonna be way more money too, so I might skip that one entirely. Ultimately, I mean, at the end of the day, you're getting such a potent car here, and I mean, personally, I could knock off 15 to 20 grand in you know, two or three options here, and I think around $100,000, maybe 105, is where this car probably makes the most sense. And number two, we're gonna talk about the look. It's kind of the same old song and dance that it's been ever since the car came out, but I do have to say, genuinely and sincerely, it's really grown on me, and this Daytona Beach Blue, is awesome and for me now the grill isn't even the worst part anymore and my wife even kind of likes the front end so it really is depending on who you are and what your tastes are the thing that bothers me about the coupes is the rear hip sculpting is really flat and kind of characterless but the vert here forgives a bit of that i still think an m3 is the better looking of the twins but this has honestly grown on me quite a bit but whether or not you love the look of your m4 you could be loving the way that you look with some new specs from bmw eyewear and m motorsport now I've teamed up with BMW Motorsport and BMW Eyewear who are sponsoring the channel for this video. So I can show you guys some of the awesome sunglasses you can get to match your car and display your status as a passionate member of the BMW enthusiast community. The styles themselves have a little something for everyone, like the cleaning classic blue lens to aviator with the white stock for the traditional E30 enthusiasts like myself, to the more modern lightweight performance wayfarer style for the X5M driver. And depending on what style you get, you'll get cool little details like M color matched lenses, an M tri-color soft pouch for carrying, and each one comes with a little envelope containing a holographic sticker proving the official authenticity. And the coolest thing is whenever you buy your first pair, you'll earn Cole's cash to then put towards your second, fourth, and 18th pair. So make sure you check out the link in the description below. They've got some really cool styles out there. And this next point's really only relevant in the context of other M cars and other BMWs we've been in this year. Like the M2 we were just in had iDrive 8 with its new features and frills like the lap timer and drift analyzer. And earlier this summer we were in the new i7 with its insane autopilot system. And I guess what I'm trying to say with this point is that it's a little bit of a bummer that the M3, the twin here, gets the new tech bits for 2023 while this here M4 soldiers on with a legacy system. And again, in a vacuum, it's a completely fine and good tech stack. I've never been feeling like I'm missing anything or wanting for anything, but in comparison and just thinking about the context of like the more affordable down market M2 gets the new stuff and the M4 doesn't, a little weird on the face of it. And this next point is a little bit hard to discuss because you can't get a stick here on the competition. This is a BMW M car, and I philosophically believe that you should always be able to have the option of a, tra of a manual transmission on your M3 4. But on the other hand, there's a word on the back tailgate, and that word is competition. And that means as fast as possible. And you know what isn't as fast as possible? 
three pedals. It's the same reason that the Comp gets X-Drive, all-wheel drive, and it makes the car heavier and maybe a little bit less engaging, but it also makes it faster, and faster in more various circumstances, like when you're carving canyons or bopping around Yosemite. The nice thing about the all-wheel drive is it's an option for the competition, where the ZF is not an option here. I totally get it, but if you really want to stick, you can buy a base model and up the boost pressure by about six pounds, and you still should get about comp power with rear-wheel drive and a stick. But with that, let's talk about all the places that this car shines. But the best thing about this car is the unbelievable <laughs> performance that you get here. Now this isn't my first go in a current gen M4. The first time I drove a G, a G chassis M car was around Road America with Polo and we actually were back to backing uh, the car with a Mustang Mach 1. And the thing that stood out immediately was just how quickly you're reaching the performance ceiling of yourself as a driver and also the car. The Mustang felt so much easier and more approachable and tamer with its naturally aspirated V8, manual transmission, and its cup to uh, tires. And then I get into this M4 and it was almost intimidating just how quickly you got up to triple digit speeds and how quickly you would be going insanely fast. Also, the aggression that you could attack a corner with. These G chassis cars are unbelievably sharp and unbelievably fast. Yeah. The chassis and balance tuning here, even on the convertible here, is so buttoned up. It feels so neutral. The car is almost responding telepathically. You've got PS4S tires here wrapped around a staggered 19 inch and then 20 inch in the back. So you've got the upgraded carbon discs for braking and those are almost nine grand and yeah, they're pretty much worth it if you're gonna be braking hard or driving hard. And then of course there's the adaptive suspension and BMW's M differential. I mean, I knew this convertible would still be fast, but I was not prepared for just how disciplined it would remain even with the top chopped off. It really feels like you just stick a roll cage in this thing and you're ready to take it out on track. It's so fast, it's so sharp, it's a real, real impressive machine. I know we just talked about the looks on the con side of the video, but I just wanna talk about the spec here in general because we're in LA and this is a very LA spec. I always appreciate and respect the crazy colors. And what you have here is Daytona Beach Blue, which is almost $4,000. And that is wrapped around the Fjord Blue Merino interior, which is about $2,500. And of course, all competitions get the shadow line or black accenting, but this gets shadow line laser headlights for an extra 300 bucks, and the lasers are a thousand. This also gets the carbon exterior package, which I'll put pricing for on tomorrow's video, but you get it in your front splitter, you get it on your wing mirrors, and in your rear diffuser. And then your wheels are a staggered 19 inch set up front and 20s in the back. And of course, you've got the classic quad M tips screaming out back. <laughs> Again, it's a very LA spec, but I've kind of come to like it. And number three is the engine. <laughs> now, this isn't gonna come as a surprise to anyone, but this is BMW's S58 engines, three liter, uh, inline six, twin turbocharged, 500 horsepower, that's up 30 from the base tune. And then this is important, 479 pound feet of torque, that's up 75 pound feet from the base engine. So this competition trim gives you a lot more performance, especially in terms of torque. I think it's largely uh, from dialing up some boost pressure. And I mean, you can just feel it. This thing has so much punch everywhere. There's a slight amount of turbo lag if you're in the wrong gear, but the ZF here is so responsive that it's really easy to dial that out. And of course, you've got your programmable M buttons here. So if you wanna just take it easy and cruise, you can do so. And then when you wanna just get on it, you can do that as well. And I have to say, I'm pretty impressed. It says, according to the EPA, that the non-competitions in this engine will get 19 MPG and this competition will get 18 MPG, but I've been thrashing this thing up and down mountains, through the canyons around LA. We're getting like 20 MPG over like a thousand miles of our trip, so it's not bad. And then as it relates to the trunk and rear seat practicality, we are on a 10 day tour here, and this thing has handled almost everything without even flinching. Your trunk isn't as big as the coupes would be, obviously, but it's still a great size. If you put the top up and raise the trunk partition, it swallows my massive suitcase plus my camera bag and my hiking pack. 
but you probably want the top down, and with the partition down, the big suitcases have to sit in the back seat. In the rear seats, you do get center cup holders, but it's not the kind that folds down, but you do get a pass-through so you could go skiing in Yosemite if it were a little later in this year. Personally, I'd have my snowboard, but you could bring it. And then you at least have rear seats. Even if they're not huge, they still offer another place to put someone or extra stuff. And even myself at six feet, I could sit back here for an hour or two before I get a little cranky. Again, 10 days, all of our clothes, all of my camera gear, all of our hiking stuff, our packs, and this thing has handled it completely fine. It's been fine. I'm impressed. And just like the exterior spec, the interior design here is very LA. You get the carbon buckets, and weirdly you get this mismatching blue, fjord blue, excuse me, interior. Which is interesting because I know that you can get a color more closely resembling Daytona Beach with the green accent, which seems like it would have made more sense. But anyway, you get the carbon interior trimming here, which is $950, which, I mean, it just looks insane. It looks fast and it looks special. But the biggest thing that I was impressed with is that none of these things really come at the expense of ergonomics or comfort. I thought these seats would be the death of me over a thousand miles, and I thought I would hear about it from my wife constantly, but it's actually been fine. And you know how earlier I said that it doesn't have everything that the new M2 and the new M3 have with its new iDrive 8 suite? Well, you still have pretty much everything that you need. Over a thousand miles, I haven't missed anything. I've got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I've got 360 cameras with the 3D view. And I've got the reverse assist breadcrumbs feature that I like and never use. But you've got custom driver profiles that you can map to your M1 and M2 shortcuts. I've got Max Chill in M1 and then Max Attack in M2. And interestingly, your wireless charger is an extra $500. It's an a la carte thing. Kind of thought it would be part of a different package, but hey, at least you can get it. And of course, you've got sharp ambient lighting in the cabin, which is very cool at night. My favorite still is coral. And the last thing I want to touch on is the drama of the open top experience that we've had over these last 10 days. I emailed my BMW rep initially and told him about the trip that we were planning and he was like, I've got the perfect car for you. And I was half expecting him to say, oh yeah, we'll put you in like an X5 M60 or something like that. But then when he was like, no, we're going to put you in an M4 competition cabriolet, I was like, Dude, we're gone for 10 days, we're hiking, filming, I've got my wife with me, like we're gonna have so much stuff. And he's like, it's gonna be fine, the M4 can handle it. And I'm just so glad that he recommended this car, especially touring around a city like LA, cruising on PCH, and then driving through the national park, some of the most gorgeous places on the planet. I'm so thankful and glad that we had the convertible here. You could see everything. The Daytona Beach Blue was the wildest, most LA spec ever. It was perfect. And then the sound you get on power, the cherry on top. <laughs> it was just such an amazing trip and I'm so grateful to BMW and Jeff for having this idea and letting us spend so much time and put on so many miles on this car. It is honestly and genuinely such a special machine and it's been a fantastic partner all week, even in such a long tour like this. So totally practical with heaps of fun. Thanks again, let's get into final thoughts. So that is the best and the rest of Marty the M4 competition convertible. And I have to say, it has been a fantastic partner. It may not be your uncle's E46 M3. It may not be your dad's E90, but it is a beautiful partner. It is fast, it's sharp, it's dynamic, it's fun, it's dramatic. And I've absolutely loved my time with it. It's been shockingly practical as well. Even with the drop top, we've managed to fit all of the stuff we've brought, camera gear, hiking gear, huge packs, 10 day tour, of California. This has handled it with no problem whatsoever. But thank you again to BMW USA, thank you to Jeff, and thanks to BMW Eyewear for making sure we look as cool as possible throughout the entire trip. And thanks again to you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. So, we're behind the wheel of the M4 Competition Cabriolet uh, with, I guess you can be my cousin. My uh, dad calls you Cousin Greg, so yep. something cousin Greg. like that. Uncle Greg. Uncle Greg. <laughs> um, but. We've got Greg with us today because he has a very unique perspective on something like this because he is the longtime owner of an E46 M3, originally SMG, swapped to manual. And I kind of wanted to just put him behind the wheel and get his thoughts. Now we're in the canyons. Um, we've had a couple minutes, just a minute or two while we're getting some other shots to kind of get a little bit acquainted with the car. So I'm just going to let him speak on what he's feeling and how it okay. compares to his car a little bit. Yeah, it's a new car for me. Um, whenever you get into a new car, whether it be a, a rental on a trip or a you know, quasi-supercar M4 Cabrio, 
it's a it's it's a new thing. So you feel like you're putting on someone else's clothes for a bit. Um, but I've, I've driven it enough now, a few, a few minutes at least, and around these canyon curves, just get some impressions. It's definitely four-wheel drive. It definitely has turbos. Those are the biggest differences I can feel. Um, although number one is it is a larger vehicle, um, but that may just be part of getting used to it. As you get more used to a car, it shrink, tends to shrink. So that may be just a matter of miles. Um, but hustling through the canyons, I do feel more weight. There is more understeer. I don't know if that's a fact factor of the four-wheel drive yeah. or the weight and just the tire suspension setup. I've got mine as a square 18-inch setup. Yeah. Same tires all around. How much does your E46 weigh, do you know? Uh, it's about 3,300. OK, so this is this is five to 700 pounds more, depending on how right. it's spec. Now, this with the convertible, is, my guess would be around 700 pounds more. Yeah. So that's that, probably a big amount. It would be like my car with five, with four people in, a, in luggage, yeah. which I've done. And I, I noticed that. Um, I've got a lot less torque <laughs> and a lot less horsepower. <laughs> yeah, and a so, straight six versus the twin turbos here. Right. I mean, there's plenty of torque in this thing. But yeah, what I was noticing on the way up in this canyon run here is you really want to be in, if you're in the wrong gear, you're going to know it pretty quickly. And yes. If you're at the wrong rev, you're going to know it pretty quickly. And when the turbos do kick in, holy shit, it's fast. You feel it. But when it's not in boost, then you're like oh. Oh, kind of waiting around for yeah, it. Well, they'll try that in E46 where the power band is from 4,000 to 8,000. Yeah. And you've got five or six gears, really. Six, five, really, because six is an overdrive. Yeah. Uh, so up here, you're at third or fourth, mainly. Yeah. Uh, but if you're, if, you're not, if you're below four grand and you want to wanna move up quickly, you've got to shift. Uh, or it's already too late, basically. Yeah, right. But modern cars, and now we're talking 20 years, uh, just nail that comfort versus grip. We're pulling a lot of grip there. It's probably over a G, right? Yeah. But um, Yeah, grip has not been an issue, it seems. But I'm not bouncing around, uh, although it may look like it on the seats. Um, but yeah, grip is, is phenomenal, and you, you do feel confident in this car. And then when you look at the speed, and thank God for the uh, heads up. All right. Uh, <laughs> We're going to turn around in here. Uh, you realize you are doing quite a bit more than you think you were, you know. And yes. That uh, and that's another difference between the E46, at least with the manual. Um, you are more connected to every second yeah. when you're in that car. And this, you can kind of get lost in the technology and in the um, the, the oh my god kind of experience, <laughs> and just the bigness. Yes. Um, and you're you know you're you're doing some speed, but it doesn't make as much sense to you as it does in a, a car with less horsepower, but a more track-oriented suspension. Yeah, uh, well, I, guess, I suppose that's the nice thing about the, the carbon ceramics here. You know, it's an $8,500 option, so it's pretty expensive, but with something of this weight, if you're gonna I would go it, for it. The it first time I hit, I squeezed the brakes of this car, that is another huge difference. Oh my God, the brakes on this are phenomenal. Yeah. It's a whole new paradigm of, a braking it's a, it would set up all everything differently for me yeah uh, and you'll feel that it, when you drive my car those are just old iron brakes you know they work like they work it would be interesting to spend a day on the track with this and really get to know it yeah. would you break some barrier into a zone where you were driving really fluidly and fast or would this car just be a heathen beast yeah of just going too fast and, and taking it away with brakes or would you develop a, a yeah. good dance partner so the question at the end here Let's say you have the keys to both of these cars and you're going to go on a canyon run. What would you take tomorrow? Depends on what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> really, do you want um, you know a, a, a rare steak or uh, you know a fish uh, salmon? You know, <laughs> yes. Salad. How bloody do you want to get? Yeah. And how much do you want to be? How intense do you want to make the experience? Yeah. With my car, you really have to be super focused. With this too, because I'm just not used to it. There's so much going on. Yeah. But uh, different vehicles for different things. Different tastes, different indeed. Different tastes, and for awesome. me, it's it's a moment. Yeah. Well, thank you. Sure. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will find this helpful. I hope so. And here we are, pulled up next to the E46. Yeah. Beautiful. Face to face. Here we are. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Now let's just have a little fun, huh?